All right, guys, so let's get started with creating our first web app service in the Azure portal using the Azure portal interface. So what we'll do is go over to our uh, services or app services, and then we can click that. If you don't have app services there, you know, you can go to all services and then from all services, you can get to app services. But from here, what we want to do is create a new app service. So we'll just create app service and then we're led to a very familiar screen. Here we are asked about the basics. What subscription? We can create a new resource group, which I will do. So I'll call this AZ App Service dash RG and click OK. We can give it a web app name. So I'll say sample web app. And then of course this has to be unique because it's going to be prepended to our dot Azure websites dot net domain. So we have to make that unique. We can choose whether we're going to publish code, a Docker container or a static web app. So the difference between these three code would allow you to choose the runtime stack. So you see here, these are all of the supported platforms, Ruby on Rails, Python, PHP, Node, Java, and of course, .NET. And we're using .NET in this course. So I would choose the latest .NET available at the time. However, if we choose a Docker container, then we can choose the OS, which we also can do with the operating, sorry, with code, but then that's relative to our stack, right? So for PHP, I can only use Linux. However, for .NET, I could use Linux or Windows, even though I would recommend Windows at this time for the .NET distro. With the Docker container, I can choose either, and then I can choose the region and of course the plan and everything else. And then the deployment afterwards would be up to me to some extent or setting up the environment on the Docker container would be up to me. And then we can choose static web app, which would be good for maybe a simple web application, not even web application, like a, <laughs> like a static website or like a Blazor web assembly website, right? Any web app that doesn't necessarily have any server side coding and any overhead could easily be a static web app. So I'm going to choose the code version for this and we'll just use the .NET that is available to us, the latest one, which is at this time .NET 6. And I'll choose my region, which is East US 2. That's the one closest to me. Then I get to set up my plan. Now the plan would be like the virtual machine that gets spun up for the web app to be on. So once again, we're foregoing actually creating the virtual machine, but instead we're really relying on the platform to provide the service to us. So this is PaaS at work, right? So the app service plan here would be saying, okay, what kind of plan or what kind of resource allocation would you like to simulate the presence of a virtual machine? So I can click create new. And I'm going to create a new one. So you can see here, I was doing some work before, but this one is going to be AZ uh, web app dash sample. Um, I'll just say dash plan, right? So spin up a new plan and then I can change the size. So if I change size, they're going to allow me to choose the specs that I want. So do I want a dev test? Distro, do I want production or do I want isolated? So let's just run through the difference, the differences between each one. So the dev test, as the name suggests, would be for an individual project, anything small scale. That is what you would want to use in um, the dev test. So here you see you have a shared infrastructure. You have one gigabyte of memory and you have 60 minutes per day compute and it's called free. All right. But then it can scale up to more dedicated minutes and more memory or up again to more memory and more minutes but with a little more cost and you notice with each option that i add i get access to something else so with the shared infrastructure that's not free i can get custom domains and i get memory and storage of course but then with the the 100 total acu i get custom domains with ssl bindings i can scale up to three instances. So scaling is a very, very important part when it comes to resource tuning with Microsoft Azure. We can also configure the compute units, the memory and the storage. Then we go over to production. 
as the name suggests, this is where you'd really want to put your web application if you are doing real things in the real world. So then based on the scale of your operation and the demand of the resources, you'd want to choose the correct plan accordingly. So look at the specs that you get, look at the cost, and that is so you can make a determination as to what you might need in general. Now, these costs are base costs because at this tier, you can actually configure based on the one that you choose also, um, scaling up and scaling down. So scaling up would mean that when there is more demand, you want to provision more resources to deal with the demand. When there is less demand, you want to contract or downsize so that you don't end up going through as much money for less traffic. So the thing is that Azure Web Apps are very, very intelligent. They allow you to scale out and scale in. And then we go over to the isolated part. So isolated you now comes with a whole lot more. It comes with everything you get from the production workload, but you also get a single tenant system. So it's like they're dedicating, right? a virtual machine, but you don't have to worry about the minute, the maintenance and the administrative overhead, but you have the dedicated asset or the dedicated resource given to you. You can run on your own virtual network. So we looked at virtual machines in the previous lesson and we looked at how you configure them and, and the, we saw that they need a VNet to run on. So here we could actually provision a web app standalone but it can connect to the vnet that might be hosting other virtual machines that's very important to know we also get the ability to have load balance internal load balancing and private access we can scale up to 100 instances as needed and we have access to the traffic manager which allows us to deploy our app at different points in the world and the traffic manager would say where's the request from the user coming from what is the nearest point I can go to? Let me go there. And that is a very, very excellent tool for a global scale application. For our simple demo, however, <laughs> all of that just to go right back to dev test and back to shared infrastructure free, we'll choose that and apply. And then we talk about zone redundancy. So here it's disabled and that's fine. So we can go over to review and create if we want, we can go to deployment. So we can set it up for continuous deployment and hook it up to Azure DevOps or GitHub. I'm going to forego that one for now. We can look at networking, but of course there's nothing here for us to do with networking. We just explained why. We can look at monitoring where we could configure it with application insights to give us, you know, real-time streaming logs of what's happening. We can set up tags, which will be more important for if we're in our organization and want to segment things, but all of that just to get back to the review and create. So at this point, we can just go ahead and hit create. Once that is completed, we can go to resource and that is our web app provision. So you see that the dashboard looks fairly consistent with what we saw with the virtual machine. I'm not going to go too much into these details just yet. We are going to get there and we'll look at scaling up and enabling some of these things. But right now I just want us to browse to our newly provisioned web application. And there we have our page. Your web app is running and waiting for your content. So now we can go ahead and deploy the specific kind of app that we want to or need to deploy. So here they're letting us know Node.js, Java, .NET, and more. So it's very, very versatile. Of course, if I stop this resource, then that page would not load. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so refreshing was causing a problem because of caching. So the service is unavailable is what we would see. We also get FTP credentials, so we know the deployment username. We can set up the host name and FTPS. And it is a very, very versatile tool for deploying your web application. So that's it for this demo. That's how you can provision your Azure web app 
using the portal. Of course, if you wanted to actually configure it to get the application from somewhere, which would more likely be your actual IDE at the point in time, then we are going to be doing an exercise later on in this module where we will go through all of that. So for now, you have just created your first Azure Web App.